Here I'm getting my seeds ready. This year I made like a little printout on paper so I can write it down in pencil, plan the garden. And this is my older seeds. I keep them in jars inside the refrigerator to keep them fresh. Some of these are like two or three years old. This year I bought seeds from Jung Seeds. And it got here pretty quick, so I'm happy with that so far. I also made this little printout of garden dates to remember. And it just shows like certain dates where I do stuff. Makes it a lot easier to remember. I also put like a little square foot planting guide. Okay, I take some regular water and a paper towel and soak it just a little bit helps the seeds stick so they don't fall all to the bottom of the edge when I put it in the plastic bag. These are bell pepper seeds. They're a couple years old so I'm just going to use all of them. I only need seven plants for the garden. Fold the paper towel over. Slide it into the bag. And I moisten the towel. Don't want it too wet. You can always add more water later if it starts to dry out. And I leave a little bit of air in there when I seal the bag up. And I start seeds in phases. This is the first phase where it's just peppers, beets, and I'm going to do some parsley. These take a little bit longer to get started. And next week, in seven days, I'll start the tomatoes and lettuce and kale. And I lay the seeds on top of each other. I take this little thermometer, digital thermometer probe. Put it like in the middle. Cover it up with another towel. Kind of seal them up. Hold it and hold it together. These little like paper clips. And this is an electric heat mat. I put a towel down because the heat mat kind of gets too hot. This kind of distributes the heat a little bit better. I put the seeds on there. And then I keep an eye on the temperature. And eventually it'll heat up. But I want it to stay between 75 and 85 degrees. And I'll kind of adjust. Maybe it might need an extra towel under there or something until I get it into the right temperature. And this is probably the easiest way I've found to germinate seeds. It's four days in and pretty much everything's already germinating. Check out the beet seeds, total germination. Here's the basil seeds. And I do a few extra in case some plants don't make it. I'll have like a fill-in plant. Here's the sun sugar cherry tomato seeds after six days. And here you can see how I broke the seedlings free from the wet paper towel. It's okay to leave a little bit on there.
Here's what corn seeds look like. Here I'm still starting seeds under the fluorescent lights. They are 12 days old. These are peppers. Here's some beets. On cooler days, I bring the seedlings out here into the greenhouse. And now that the weather's kind of warmed up a little bit, this lettuce I started in midwinter has really taken off. I've had a few salads from that. And when the temperature outside is above 60 degrees or so, I bring them out here in the sun. And I bring them outside early in the morning. And when the sun goes down, I bring them inside and put them under the lights. And then I turn the lights off at about 11 o'clock. After the plants have been in the dirt for two weeks, I feed with miracle Grow 18, 18, 21. And I use it half strength. I use half a tablespoon and one gallon. And here the pepper plants have been in the dirt for two weeks. Tomato plants for one week. Tomatoes are already catching up to the pepper plants. And I take the fertilizer solution. I use a little measuring cup and water each plant one by one. Get the equal amount. And in two more weeks, I'll fertilize one more time with the miracle Grow. So I've, I'll use a total of one tablespoon for the whole seedling phase of miracle Grow. And I use this because it doesn't smell when I have the plants inside the house. And then I'll switch over to this fish emulsion fertilizer. This is organic and it's much better. But it stinks. So that's the only reason I use miracle Grow right at the start. And here are the plants. They've been in the dirt for four weeks. These are tomatoes and peppers, the beets, kale, and parsley. And I'm getting ready to do the second fertilizing. This one gallon jug will fertilize this whole batch. And here's a look out in the greenhouse. This is the red sail lettuce from the winter time. Sugar snap peas. This is corn. And the black seeded Simpson lettuce. Okay, I noticed on a couple of my seedlings here there's like a weird brown spot and they just kind of looked a little yellowish not as healthy but I just hit them like two days ago with a dose of fish emulsion fertilizer and it's amazing how much greener and healthier they look so when in doubt I've learned use that fish emulsion and it does miracles Stinks up the house, but I like it. And here it is, April 10th. And I'm planting out the kale, collards, and beets. This is a kale plant right here. One per square foot. And the beets I plant four per square foot. Next I go through the bed and break up these clumps. Good to have a good pair of gloves. And then I top dress the bed. Where the tomatoes are planted, I'm gonna put a little bit of limestone. And then the whole bed, I'll put a little bit of azomite, rock dust, and earthworm castings. And I find it necessary to use this little sifter thing. And I grind the little chunks. There's like chunks. And I grind it through the wire mesh. And it ends up into like a real fine powder. 
Makes it easier to distribute on the bed. And this is the earthworm castings. This is the micronized azomite. This is the garden lime. And I'm gonna plant tomatoes right here in the back of this bed. And I'm just putting a little bit of limestone. Not that much. And then I mix all of this into the top three inches of soil. And I take this little putty knife I've got little notches cut into the edge of the bed so it makes it easy to make the little square foot grid. And here it is April 17th. I've checked the weather and it doesn't look like we're going to have a freeze in the next seven days. So today is transplant day. And these seedlings have been in the dirt for f about five and a half weeks. Okay, with the tomato plant, I cut these lower branches off. And I'll plant it deep in the hole. Dirt will come up to here and this will root out. And I've got everything planted out for 2016. It's always nice, there's a lot of work. It's nice to be ready for the season. Thanks for watching.